the wrist. Greetings, I'm Shad, and recently on Shadiversity, we have made this more historically accurate falchion. Now, I say more historically accurate because that is not to say it is perfectly historically accurate. In fact, there are some distinct errors or inaccuracies in regards to the one we made versus the surviving examples in museums. And thankfully, we were helped out with this video by James Elmsley himself, who was able to point out specific differences between this one that we made to those surviving pieces. Now, James Elmsley is basically the foremost authority when it comes to falchions. He authored the Elmsley typology that I myself and many people refer to. And so when it comes from Mr. Elmsley, yes, I'm definitely going to be listening. So the falchion that we have here is modeled after the Type 1A falchion, which is the more stereotypical type of falchion, the ones that have a very flared or widened portion at the top of the blade. And in regards to the general weight of those falchions, the one we made is actually very, very bang on the money. And so they range between 900 to 1,000 grams, 0.9 kilos to one kilo. And our falchion here, just under one kilo. So bang on the money in regards to that. Ours is a little bit longer where type 1A falchions, they range from 55 centimeters to 60 centimeters. This is about 65 overall in terms of the blade length which started the whole journey of me wanting a more historically accurate falchion because the ones that were just too heavy. And that's when I came across this machete blade right here and was very surprised by how more sword-like it is. But let me just be very clear. It's not to say it's perfectly sword-like or exactly like medieval falchions. It is thinner overall than the ones you can buy, which was first thing that got my attention. Because seriously, this machete, like I said, it's, it's light and it's far more sword-like than a lot of the machetes you can buy. This is one of my other machetes and it's just got such a thick blade. And my experience, usually machetes are thicker, but you can get ones that are thinner. It's just that this one also has a good distal taper and it has such a nice weight distribution. But this is an example of just like a much thicker, heavier chopping machete. Would not make a good sword. Good for a machete, not for a sword. But overall, this blade is much thinner in one significant area than historical falchion. At the tip, it, it's, a, it's actually quite close in terms of how thin the blades got at the tip. Type 1A falchions usually reach about 1.5 mil at the tip, where this is 1 mil at the tip. But they're actually much thicker at the base, where this one isn't. This one is actually still very thin at the base, which will create a different kind of weight dynamic in the blade, comparing the falchion we built here to the surviving examples. Type 1A falchions usually have a thickness at the base of around five millimeter. But I do need to clarify that that is the thickness of the spine of the blade at the base. It, of course, has a gradual taper, creating a bevel all the way down to the edge. So that's not five mil throughout at the base, just at the spine. And they have a much more aggressive distal taper, getting to that 1.5 millimeter at the tip. A lot of the falchions that you buy online usually have like either two mil, you know, thickness throughout, or even thicker at the base with somewhat of a distal taper, but still too thick at the tip. One of the other key differences between this one and a more historical falchion is that they do have more profiling on the blade. Now, that is not to say that they always had more refined blade profiling historically, but more often, especially with the examples, there is a stronger kind of tapering from the spine of the blade down to the edge. If we did that on this blade, it would have been too light overall because we hit bang on the money. We didn't want to take any more material off the blade and reduce it down, which also kind of makes sense because remember the blade is already one mil thick at the tip where the standard type is actually about 1.5, which gives a bit more meat to grind down and have a bit of a, a tape or angle, which basically gives a bevel on the whole length of the blade from the spine to the edge. Now, it's also interesting about that because the surviving examples have that kind of gradual bevel, even though it's one point mil at the spine of the blade, because it has this bevel and it's grinding down to a thinner point here, the actual flat of the blade is still going to be even thinner than what the spine width was. And so even though we don't have that kind of beveling profiling on the edge of the blade here on this falchion, overall on balance, the width and weight of the tip is actually quite close to what the surviving would be because the historical falchions even get thinner towards the blade thanks to that bevel profile. The other thing to point out is where type 1 falchions were more common, which is around 13th century, spring steel would have been very uncommon in that period. Spring steel we can find more references of in medieval period, in the late medieval period. And so by not having higher quality spring steel, you wouldn't be as, uh, I guess, comfortable having such a thin blade because when it would bend like this, it would stay bent. And as a result, you would want to reinforce it to avoid 
over flexing like that and to do that a much thicker you know spine blade at the base would help prevent that having a sword as thin as this throughout with the type of steel that was far more common in that period in the medieval period would not be nearly as durable. The other thing to compare is the point of balance. The point of balance for type 1 falchions are around 10 to 15 centimeters from the cross guard. And I actually haven't even checked the point of balance for this. So we're hitting around there. And to just measure that, ours is about seven centimeters point of balance. And so it's a bit lower, but not too much. I think we got close, but historical falchions are going to be a little bit more top heavy. That's if they point of balance is at the 10 centimeters. The 15 centimeters point of balance is that they'll feel more top heavy by a, you know, a noticeable difference. And that would give more authority in the cut. So that really is going to be dependent on the exact point of balance. 15 centimeter point of balance, they're not going to be nearly as nimble as the one we have here. 10 centimeter point of balance is actually close-ish to how nimble and uh, maneuverable this is. And uh, look, I always prefer kind of a lower point of balance because I like that maneuverability. They just feel easy to cut with. But that is an important thing to point out in the differences. This falchion here is probably even more maneuverable by a small amount than even the most maneuverable type 1A falchions. And lastly, we have the overall profile. Historical falchions almost have a more point-like flare where they come down at a sharper angle from the tip and then instead of gradually going it almost has a sharper point at the flaring part and then tapers down to their handle. So we were a bit limited by the beginning shape of the machete that we started with but there are examples of type 1 falchions that are not as acute at the tip like the Clooney falchion. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video the falchion that we made here is far more historically accurate than the ones you can buy but it is not perfect. There are some distinct differences that I wanted to explain to you that James Elmsley was able to share with me and so genuinely thank you James for pointing out those differences because I love swords, I want to know more about them, and of course I want to share with you the most accurate information possible. Now it's not to say that I don't love this falchion, I actually flippin' love it, and it is so much better than the ones we've been able to buy. And it cuts like a flippin' beast! And if you want to see it in action, just go check out our video where we find out if you can chop down full trees with swords. And who knows, depending on finances, we might be able to get a perfectly accurate falchion in the future. If you want to become a Shadowversity Knight and get access to exclusive behind the scene content as well as additional content, all you need to do is sign up either on Player, Subscribe Star, Channel Memberships or Patreon, donate between one, five dollars or anything that you're willing to, and then you become a Shadowversity Knight and get access to that additional content. And it's great fun stuff, we get to interact with you guys and you're also helping sustain us to be able to keep making this content because the general revenue that we've been able to make through AdSense and other means isn't enough for us to cover the overheads and costs of making this content because we have a full crew here as you've probably been able to see so it is genuinely thanks to our supporters that we're able to do this and if you would like to become one of those supporters it would mean the world thank you to everyone who is and if you actually want to see the conversion process of when we change you know a machete especially this machete right here into this falchion we have the build video it's a lot of fun and you also might be able to learn how to do it yourself because even though it can't give you a perfectly accurate one, it give you a much more accurate one than many of the type you could buy. So the video's right there. You should, it's a lot of fun. Click on it right now. I do hope to see you there. And until then, farewell.